These are comfy, okay? I mean, look. Wait, who are they made by? The Timberland, bro. No, no, no. What does that say? Eddie Bauer. That's like high class stuff. Look at that. Put the little racing stripes in there. Little detail. <laughs> I could wear these all day long. You know, I came to the States uh, probably 15 years ago uh, to get away from kind of a bad situation in, in London. I uh, just didn't want to be pulled back into, into that kind of uh, environment um, and stumbled upon a program called uh, Camp America. And so I came out as a camp counselor. I was probably, I was 18 and I was in my second year, I believe, of trade school as a joiner, captain joiner and um, they needed a, a shop teacher, someone to start a shop program for these inner city kids from Boston, and that was in Maine. And it was an amazing experience. These were tough, tough kids. I thought I grew up in like a bad neighborhood. My neighborhood was pretty cush compared to what they grew up in. Um, and that's where the story gets really long. But fast forward, <laughs> and my assistant was now my wife, so I met a Texan I, and uh, kind of that was the, the, the end of that you know I we dated did long distance thing and uh, yeah now I'm in Wembley Texas and I've been in Wembley for 11 years it's kind of crazy this is where I come to hide from my kids <laughs> it's kind of cool this thing was pretty pretty beat up so we got it repainted everything and I just made you know all the cabinets and stuff not be too fancy but just nice and clean fresh look um, and then we travel and teach with it so all six of us it's kind of nuts right <laughs> about five years I guess now maybe six probably five years ago I started Philip Morty Furniture I, I did a you know two apprenticeships I did a four-year apprenticeship and a seven-year apprenticeship and the last apprenticeship is actually why I ended up in Wembley, Texas, because um, I worked for a master craftsman. Um, and what drew me to him was this, you know, this romantic, that's why I'm starving now, but this romantic one-man shop uh, doing the best work he could possibly do. Um, that, that old story of like the inside, the underside is gonna look as good as the outside. Um, and I really try to stand by that. My dad wasn't a craftsman, but he was in the trades. He was a, a laborer. He just worked hard, did what needed to be done, but he was gone a lot. And early on when we decided to have kids and family, I wanted, I wanted them to see me get up every morning, get into the shop and, and work my, my tail off. And then to see like, oh wow, my dad built that piece. And, and to them, I'm a rock star for now. They're still pretty young, so that's probably gonna change. But, that was really important to me. It was a, um, a difficult way to make a living, but a good way to live or something like that. I can't remember who said that, but it, it really is true. You know, my, my family is around me. My shop is by my home. Um, and what I hope that clients get from me and, and why they're willing to wait so long for a piece is they're getting a one of a kind, unique piece um, that, that my heart and soul has gone into uh, every aspect of that piece. I'm glad that menu's no bigger because I, I don't know what's good. Well, I, get my I might just get my classic BBL2. I mean, the reason I started doing my own business is so I could be close to my family. Um, then being homeschooled, I don't necessarily, you know, expect or maybe want them to become furniture makers, but to see their father doing something creative and going to the shop every day and getting up and working. And, I think, I think there's a lot that can come from that without them even knowing. Um, and hopefully some of them may pick up woodworking. Not this guy. <laughs> Got four kids uh, and my wife's, you know, unfortunate enough my wife can stay home. She homeschools them and she runs the behind the scenes of, of the business. 
<laughs> it's we have a lot of fun. We definitely have a lot of fun. It's always a little chaotic. We we uh, have a we lot of adventures. We mess up the house very frequently. Yes. <laughs> I like all of his amazing work, and I like that he manages to not cut his fingers off on his furniture project. Ace? I work at Ace. Yes, you do work at Ace. I work at ACC. Same Ace? difference. Ace? No, Ace is a hardware store. <laughs> I feel like this path kind of chose me, which sounds a little bit, you know, goofy. Um, but I did come from a kind of a bad neighborhood. I'm dyslexic, um, trouble kid, trouble kind of background. And the craft is what saved me. And it was the first time I was told I was good at something, you know. And, and I think, oh, don't want to get into the weeds too much, but every kid wants to be told they're good at something, right? And, you know, I was a 15-year-old going to trade school. That's when I first started going to trade school. and they just plugged me in, you know, as a, as a carpenter joiner, and that's what I ended up loving, you know, and, and realizing, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this. So this is the second one of these I've made, so it's, it's heavily based off mid-century modern um, record console, I like the German style ones, so this would be for the clients, uh, Macintosh, a tube amp and turntable that he has here. There's actually a light that will go on underneath this so when it opens it lights up. And then this tray, it's basically a tray, this will be on stabilizers. It's not in here yet, so this whole thing would be uh, free floating from the rest of the cabinet to help with vibration. And then this is just storage. The speakers will just go in there. What people get from me when they, they come to me is it's kind of the, it's a whole experience. It's a, I'm designing the piece along with them. I want this piece to uh, en embody what they uh, visualize and what they want this piece in their house to be, um, what it might be for. But ultimately, they're kind of coming to me too because they like my design. They, they, they kind of like my aesthetics on, on what I do. So this is the idea of this. Didn't want the whiskey and the glasses with this because of the vibration. So up on the top will be, you know, whiskey glasses, maybe a little humidor. I really love sharing. I teach too, so I get excited, you know, and it's, it's everything's been done before. It's all been done before, but when I come up with something or a technique or make a jig or whatever that it is, I love sharing it. And if it can help others with the work that they do, that just brings me a sense of, of joy and, and, and a fulfillment in my life that I probably wouldn't get if I just plugged in and did a nine to five job, so. What, what motivates me is to be able to try to do better work than I did, you know, the, the project before. Just keep trying to push that. I've been very selective. I've, I've done everything I can to be selective to do the work I want to do. I can make more money doing lesser work, but I truly don't believe I'd be as happy. Okay. This is my favorite place I like to come, just to get away, have a shop, play with the teddy bears. <laughs> Kind of a, an awesome thing to be able to do every day. So, okay, 
shares and his katana case that he made. And he, I like his I like his rockers. And he also made. Uh, he made this. What about uh, your bed? Huh? You made the bed out of broken parts of the old bed. Yeah, it's still pretty cool though.